Hello again, this is David Ward and I had a request for another tutorial. This one's going to cover what I know about subsurface scattering, which is not a lot. Most of what I know has just been trial and error, just playing with it till it looks correct. But I can show you what I do. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. First thing I'm going to do is delete the the, the uh, the default cube out of there. I'm going to go ahead and add in a monkey, Suzanne of Blender fame. Go ahead and add subsurface modifier to her and set her to smooth. And I'm going to go into side view, hit the three on my numpad, control alt R, open up my rotate gizmo, rotate her around, bring her up. Hit G, just so you know. G, click, hit G, and you can just drag your mouse around. It moves with it. There you go. Click when you're done. There you go. Okay. Anyways, so now got the monkey set up where we want. Show you a couple of tricks I've probably showed you before. I'm gonna do it again. I go into top view, and I'm going to add. Click right there. Add a, an empty. I want to grab my light. Shift. Grab the empty, control T, track to constraint. Now I've got a uh, spotlight that I can control pretty well where it's pointing. So just drag the empty around, and wherever it's at, that's where the spotlight's going to point. Speaking of spotlight, I'll go ahead and grab that lamp and, to, and uh, set it as a spotlight. I want buffered shadows. I don't typically mess with the ray trace very often. Seems like it takes too long to render. So, anyways, buffered usually gives me desirable results enough, so I just use it. Gonna select both of those, Shift D, duplicate them. Gonna grab this guy, move him around here, and set the energy to about 0.75. So now I got my key light right here, 100% energy, and my fill light with 0.75, 3 quarter percent energy. Three quarter percent. I guess that's seventy five percent, isn't it? Anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. One more thing. We'll do the same thing with the camera. Make an empty. Grab the camera. Uh, excuse me. Shift click and Control T. Track to constraint. Now I can control where the camera's pointing. Hit zero. Go back to my camera. Grab that empty that it's pointing at. And just move it around. Pretty handy. Okay. So now. Get Suzanne arranged where I want her. I'm gonna hit F12, go and render, and that's what she looks like. No textures or anything. So I want to give her a texture, and you know I'm gonna make this render window a little smaller because when you start uh, playing with the subsurface scattering, uh, it starts taking a little bit longer to render. So I'm gonna make the screen 600 by 400, kind of a widescreen type of view. And I'm going to set my rendering settings. X parts, going to set that up to 10. Y parts up to 10 also. And I want to OC tree resolution down to 64. OSA to 5. That'll help render things a little faster. I don't know exactly what all these settings do. I just know that the lower the numbers, the faster it renders. And it still looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and render again. So there we go. Okay. Now, to give Suzanne a material, add new, and just name it red. Grab the red color. Not bright red, but kind of a, a little bit darker red. There we go. Okay. And I want to give her kind of a wax look, so I'll give her a little bit of a sheen. So, increase the specular level a little bit to one. Hardness, going to go ahead and drag it about 390 just yeah there we go so now I'll go ahead and render again okay nice shiny right now it looks plastic okay this looks like it's made out of solid plastic but we're gonna change that by adding the subsurface scattering so go to subsurface scattering still in this materials tab click subsurface scattering and it automatically sets it with a gray scattering color now what the scattering color does as far as I can tell is it takes the the normal color that you've set and mixes it with with the scattering color. 
And so right now it's a little bit darker. It's a little bit darker red because it's mixing with this gray. So if I set it to white, it'll go back to that bright red. And if I set it to black, it'll be real dark. There we go, all the way black. And also that applies if you use a different color. It'll mix the red with the green, kind of give it a brownish color, dark brown. The closer you get to white, the better, because then you keep more of your original color. So I'm going to go ahead and just make that not quite solid white, a little bit gray, just a little bit. So anyways, OK, so here's what the default settings. Go ahead and render it. And it renders a little gray thing first, which is kind of the underlying thing that tells Blender this has a subsurf scanner or something. I, don't don't quote me on that. I'm just making stuff up as I go. Anyways, okay, so we got the monkey rendered here. Still looks a little plastic, but it looks a little a little softer, a little softer around these edges here. So uh, we want to go ahead and make it look like wax. So. It needs to be thinner and it needs to let some light travel through it. So, go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to increase the scale. Now, it kind of depends on what size your object is, as to what, what size the scale should be. So, the higher the scale, the thinner it's going to look. So, right now I'm going to try one. And I can't really tell anything on the sphere because it's, you know, it's all the same size. So, I'm going to go ahead and click this preview type monkey. And as you can see, it kind of gives it a waxy look here. So I'm going to go ahead and try that one out. Set the scale to 1. Go ahead and try it out. See what it looks like. Oh, one might have been too much, huh? It's blended everything together. Certainly looks waxy, but it looks a little like it's been melted already. So we'll go ahead and decrease that. Go ahead and escape out of there. We don't need to render all that. Go ahead and uh, put that down to sound 0.5. And to get the light to shine through, what you need to do is increase the back scattering weight. So just it's the the default is one, but that doesn't let very much come through. So I usually set it to about three or four. So let's just say three point five, just to be safe. And we'll go ahead and well, here's one thing. We don't really have any lights behind it. This one's kind of just over to the side. So I'm going to grab this guy, Shift D, duplicate it again. Drag the pointer right there and the light over here. Okay, so now we kind of got a uh, a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. And the backlight, yeah, that's a good setting, 0.75. So let's go to the camera view again. Hit zero. Oops, I hit zero when I was in the in the energy settings, so it zeroed it out. So I'll go ahead and fix it. Anyways, okay. So go ahead and drag that down so it's kind of more behind the model. Okay. Now, we should... I don't want to speak too soon. Sometimes it doesn't work the first time, but uh, we go ahead and render it out, and we should see some, some more pinkish color around the thinner areas, like inside the ear here, and maybe along the edges of the skin, and maybe the eyebrows or something. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, looks like that 0.5 is still too much, because it's really softening everything together. But uh, let's see what it looks like. Okay, yeah, you can kind of see some thinness to it now. Maybe not as much as we want, but uh, it's a little bit thinner here, you can tell, and around the edges here. So let's keep playing with it. Let's go ahead and make it 0.25, go even half of half of half. And let's go ahead and increase the back to, well, let's make it 5, see what happens. Okay, now go ahead and render out again. Okay, look, well, 2 5 might still be a little bit too much, but it's getting better. Okay, well, we got some thinness going on. I might would want a little bit more, but for the sake of time, you get the idea. You just increase, keep increasing the back until the 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 thinner, fleshy parts or you know waxy parts, whatever the thinner materials or uh, object will let more light in. Anyways, okay. Uh, while I'm here, the uh, usually candles aren't really that shiny, so I'm going to reduce the the hardness of that. 
little bit more, a little bit less specular level too. Uh, okay. okay, now let's see. See if it looks like wax now. I think that could pass for wax. Put a little wick coming out the top of it, a little flame, we'll have a little monkey candle. Okay, that's for wax, and you can kind of play with those settings for skins too. But usually, skin is a little bit different. It doesn't have as high a setting uh, on the scale. So I'm going to go ahead and make this kind of a skin tone, Caucasian. Kind of a peachy, peachy tan. There we go. And skin's not going to be that shiny either, unless it's sweaty or something, but we're not going with sweaty today. We're just going to go just a normal dry skin. No, not dry skin, because then it would be kind of flaky or something. Anyway, you get the idea. Just normal skin. Okay. Go ahead and render this out. It's probably just gonna, still going to have that waxy look to it. Uh, yeah, it has the waxy look, but it also kind of has a skin look. Just kind of keep keep playing with the settings so it's a little too soft around the eyes and such and uh, one one thing I can show you real quick and in, in the subsurface scattering scale it down say uh, 0.25 is too much let's try 0.15 and it since it's skin and when light shows through skin it's typically a red color because of the the blood in the skin so I'm going to set the, the, the radius RGB. These are kind of the colors that that shows through. Right now they're all set to the same number, so they're all going to be about the same. So it's going to be white light coming through, which just makes a lighter lighter version of the, the main color. But we want it to be a little bit more red. So let's make the red 10. And, you know, I've ever heard blue-blooded something or other. Let's go ahead and make that the blue. Uh, let's make it four. We don't want it purple. Just a little bit, a little bit of red. Uh, a little bit, not solid red. You get the idea. Pardon my stuttering. Anyways, you can kind of see around the edges of the preview window here how it's going to look. Kind of a red tint to the, the edges of the skin. Okay. And uh, let's go ahead and render it out. Okay, looks like way too much red. Go ahead and let it finish rendering so we can kind of see. This might help. This might work for something like uh, if you're if you're doing an animation of uh, say a blood stream or something like that. You want a blood cell. This might would work for that. But for just a normal head of you know with skin on it. This is way too much. So let's X out. Let's make the red. Let's make it. Let's make it five. And then the blue, I will make, say, one and a half. And now let's render, see what happens. And that's a little better. One reason it's so bright over here is because we have that back set to five. And the higher the back, the more light it lets through. So I'm going to lower the back to, like I said before, about three. Uh, I said three and a half before. Let's go with three this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and render again. And here we go, some pretty convincing looking skin. So that's basically how I do my subsurface scattering. Hope this has been an informative tutorial. Hope I didn't stutter across my words too much. It's a little late. I'm about ready to go to sleep. But anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something, and I will see you next time.